tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. And it happened again last night. It'll keep happening. As I lay in my bed, cold sweat upon my brow, I cannot help but think to myself, how did it come to this? Seven years ago, my girlfriend and I had planned a trip to Salem. She was always fascinated by the supernatural and the macabre. I personally didn't care for it all that much, but I cared for her. God, did I care for her. So, despite my own disinterest, I resigned myself for the trip. As we drove north through the mist and past the trees, I couldn't deny a growing feeling of anxiety within my breast. It was a feeling that I was unfamiliar with. I chalked it up to nerves. After all, I was never one for superstition. Of course, I knew the history of Salem. Who doesn't? I knew of the trials that sentenced all those innocent young women to death. I knew of the many stories of hauntings and strange phenomena that supposedly plagued the town. And while I didn't feel some small measure of pity for the poor souls that had suffered there, I didn't feel some supernatural force at work. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? When we finally reached Salem and parked at the hotel, I felt the small weight lifted off me. I guess it was just car sickness, I thought to myself. I chucked us in and we unpacked our stuff. My girlfriend was so happy to be there that she was practically bouncing with excitement. Remembering that smile on her face never fails to bring pangs to my heart. Because that was the last day I'd ever see her smile. That day we took to the sights, visited all the tourist attractions that we could, of which there were many, and headed back to our hotel room. We waited until nightfall before we headed out again. We walked along the silent streets of the town. Nothing but the orange-yellow glow of the street lamps to hold back the darkness. She held on to my arm and looked up into my face with a mischievous smile that I'd come to fear. My girlfriend was kind of a rebel and always liked to shirk the rules whenever she thought she could get away with it. This was one of those times. Hey! she said, pointing ahead of us. Let's go there. I looked in the direction she pointed and saw the dark silhouette of a house. I recognized it immediately. The house was one of the many attractions we'd visited earlier in the day. Supposedly it was haunted by some ghosts or some such nonsense. While I held no credence to such ridiculousness, I couldn't deny that looking upon that place gave me a deep sense of uneasiness. The feeling that I had felt in the car had returned. I'm not sure, I said. What are you? she said mockingly. Scared? No, I objected in a vain attempt to protect my manhood. She just smirked at me and rolled her eyes. All right, she said. Let's go back. No, I said, catching her arm as she started to walk past me. She looked at me with a raised eyebrow. We're going to the house. Great! She exclaimed as she turned on her heel and started making her way toward the house. I had no choice. If I was going to come out of this whole thing with some measure of dignity intact, I'd have to go into that damn house. With an audible sigh, I trudged along behind her as she practically skipped toward it. As we drew closer to it, its features began to become much clearer to me. In the daylight, it was three stories high, with white windows and a matching door to go with them. It composed of what I knew to be red brick. Yet, in that horrible darkness, I could see neither red nor white, only the same inky blackness that swallowed the features of all that surrounded it. In front of the building was a tree. In the daylight, it was so unremarkable that it barely garnered notice from me. During the night, however, its innocence was stripped away. 
Now its branches appear to be no longer than that of a life-bearing gift of nature, but rather the twisted, gnarled fingers of a malevolent creature, reaching toward the heavens with malicious intent. Looking at these sights only served to build up upon my growing anxiety. What once was a simple pressure in my chest now became that of an awful tingling sensation that crawled up my spine and settled upon my shoulders. But I bore with it, for her sake. She really seemed to be enjoying herself, and I didn't want to spoil her fun. She was so happy then. If I only knew. If I had known what would happen, I'd have never taken us to that forsaken place. God help me. If only I had known. As we grew closer to the house... The feeling in my chest intensified. My girlfriend seemed completely unabated by any such feeling. I imagined that to her it was just a spooky house. But to me, every step was akin to inching closer to the edge of an abyss. Cold sweat began to pour down my face as we grew closer. In all my years, I'd never felt as afraid as I did in that moment. Every instinct I had was telling me to run to get away from that awful place. Finally, we reached the door, that God-forsaken door. The moonlit hit us at just the right angle, so as to illuminate it. It appeared to me as pale as death itself. My girlfriend reached out to the door handle and tried to open it. No such luck. I must admit that I felt no small measure of relief at the sight of that. Well, we tried... I said with as much nonchalance as I could muster. Let's just head back to the hotel and get a bite to eat. I'm thinking pizza. You? Oh, hold your horses, she said as she rifled in her pockets for something. After a moment, she produced a small metallic object that I did not recognize. She then brought it up to the door handle and started to pick the lock. Where'd you learn that from? I said with a mixture of surprise and dismay. Girl's gotta have some secrets, you know. She said with a sly smile. And done, she said as the door gave an audible click. She pushed open the door and it obliged her with an audible groan that seemed to carry through the house and passed us both. Without any hesitation, she strolled confidently into the house. I took one step after her and the whole world stopped. In that instant, I felt the air get considerably colder. While Salem isn't exactly known for its warm climate, this was something altogether different. It was like being put into a freezer. The hair in my arms rose up. Goosebumps covered my skin. I shook violently. When I didn't follow after her, my girlfriend turned to me. Now she noticed my poor state and came rushing to my side. I realized then I could not hear her. I could see her lips moving. I could feel her touch as she tried to shake me from whatever malignancy that had taken a hold of me. But I could not hear her, nor could I speak to her. I was positively frozen in place. Then I fell and the world went black. How long I was out, I do not know. Nor did I know where I went. It was a strange feeling. When I departed the waking world, I could not tell you where I was then. It was like a dream, and yet I was completely aware of myself and my surroundings. Only there were no surroundings, just an inescapable void of nothingness. In that void from beyond came a soft, whispery voice. It was faint, but it was there, just outside the range of making out what it said. Then the darkness condensed itself into the shape of a person. This person was composed of pure shadow and held no features on its face. It came towards me. I was fixed in place. I couldn't move. Slowly but surely, it closed the gap between us. Only when its non-face was inches away from mine did it speak again. There was no loss of understanding this time. It spoke in that soft, whispery voice that I've come to hate. Tell them all. 
I woke with a start and was greeted to walls that were pure white. I was in a hospital. My girlfriend was by my side. Her eyes were red and puffy, as though she had been crying. When I tried to call her name, my voice came out hoarse and raspy, and I felt a rough pain in my throat. Don't talk, she said as she held my hand. With my free hand, I pointed at my throat with an inquisitive expression on my face. She told me that when I froze up at the house, I had started screaming and wouldn't stop until the paramedics took me away. I didn't remember screaming, but the pain in my throat was evidence enough for me to believe her. I lay my head back down and stared up at the ceiling while she did her best to comfort me. Though I had no trouble hearing her this time, her words did not register. All I could think of was that voice and the message it carried. Tell them all. Everything fell apart after that. The following night, the shadow person came to me again, bearing the same message as before. Tell them all. I didn't know what it wanted from me. Tell them all? Tell them all what? What did it want? Those questions plagued my mind at all hours of the day. Day and night, I'd try to understand just what happened at that godforsaken place. I didn't understand. I, I still don't. Was it a spirit? Or was I just losing my mind? I did not know. I began to fear the very concept of sleep, knowing that thing was waiting for me, waiting for me to close my eyes. I began to do whatever I could to fend off sleep. I'd fill my hours with meaningless work and chores. I'd spend money on an overabundance of energy drinks and coffee to keep me awake. But all creatures need sleep. So did I. And sooner or later my body would crumble and I'd collapse. And without fail, the thing would be waiting for me, always saying the same thing. Tell them all. Each and every time I woke from that horrid nightmare, my determination to never go back intensified. I began to sleep less and less, but the longer I stayed awake, the more my mind deteriorated. I began to hallucinate the shadow person, and in time I began to hear its message, even when I was awake. Tell them all. Tell them all. Tell them all. The stress began to destroy me, inside and out. I became much shorter with people, especially my girlfriend. She'd been there since the beginning, and though I'm not proud of it, she'd been there as I slowly destroyed myself. I lashed out at her every chance I got, not because she had done anything wrong, but simply because she was the only one around for me to vent my frustration at. Naturally, my abuse against her and myself finally became too much for her to bear, so she left me. I remember being very upset at the time, but looking back on it now, I believe that she made the right decision for both of us. Her leaving me had finally been the wake-up call that I needed. I checked myself into a mental rehabilitation facility and spent the next few years going through psychotherapy consuming medically prescribed pills. It wasn't easy. There were times when I believed that I had made a horrible mistake and wanted nothing more than to be free of that place. But in time, the hallucinations receded and I began to see the creature less and less. It wasn't completely gone, but I would have several nights where I wouldn't see the thing at all. In time, I finally regained some of the person I had once been, and was cleared for release. I've never shared this story with anyone before today, but as I've said, the creature never completely disappeared. There are times when I sleep that it returns to me with its incessant demand. Tell them all. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it wants. But I'm sharing this story with you all in the hope finally putting this chapter of my life to a close. Now that you know my story, I have one thing to ask of you. Please, tell them all. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights